Today, we're going to be installing a motor gun fun spacer, the 516s for the VQ motor. This one will be here. This come with all the hardware. So for the first step here, you want to crack loose these step bar bolts. There should be four of them on uh, each side there. And uh, once you get that done, you can remove the step bar and then we'll start taking apart the intake. When you do end up removing the step bar, just make sure to put the uh, bolts back into the uh, factory locations just so you don't lose them and then it'll be easier for them to reinstall. You know where your hardware is. Once you remove the uh, strap bar and then you remove the fascia cover for the uh, uh, there's a certain bolt um, pattern that you need to follow here. I believe it's one, two, three, four, five. I'll post it in the video here so you can see it for yourself. But you gotta follow that as you take off the plenum, just so nothing creeps or uh, bolts get stripped or anything like that. And then you'd also need to follow that same procedure with putting it back on. Um, as regards to these wiring harness, there's a certain way to take them off too without breaking it. So make sure you do that before you remove your strap bar as well. So when you're removing your uh, intake, I have an aftermarket one, but it applies to everyone. Just uh, make sure you connect the backing line at the bottom before you pull it out. No tug on it or anything like that. And also make sure to never touch your throttle body or else you'll have to go through the relearning process and it'll throw off your idle and uh, it's just a fucking mess. Well, after you remove all 18 bolts from the top hat, as you're doing it, label them with a little bit of tape each one. That way when you go to install it, you uh, have an easier time if you follow that bolt pattern picture I put up for you guys. Because um, each bolt is a different length and some of them are actually uh, studded and then they have nuts on top. And uh, yeah, after that you should be okay to remove this. Of course, you have to remove all the vacuum lines first, and then it should pop free. So I got lucky with a motor that doesn't consume a lot of blow-by with the oil. But, um, so this is effectively what we're doing with the spacer, is this front intake runner here. Because the top mount is a lot thinner as it gets to the front, that reduces the air volume that actually is received by that lower runner there. And uh, with the spacer, it'll lift that up a bit. As you can see, that's the Motordyne plenum spacer. I opted to keep my factory gasket as long, as well, sorry, as the Motordyne gasket. But when installing it, just uh, remember to peel back this oil cap filler because if you pinch it between the plenum and the oil cap what will happen is you'll have a massive vacuum leak and that is not fun. Another thing I noticed too and it's, I'm not sure if it's only with the Canadian cars but the coolant line seems to run from the motor to the throttle body and I did some research and this is because of cold starts. They don't want the throttle body itself um, to freeze and then the motor to burn out trying to open it but the thing is is that will increase in the temperatures to your actual intake plenum which is kind of ass backwards of what we're trying to do with reducing uh, heat with the isothermal spacer and uh, so I'm going to put a shut off butterfly valve in between here just cut it along the line there and uh, 
we'll put that in and then just remember to burp or bleed or get rid of the air pocket or your coolant, whatever the hell you want to say. Um, and that should reduce throttle body temperatures. Because I noticed even with um, this Jim Wolf Racing one and with the uh, heat isolating tape, it still gets extremely hot to the touch. Um, after about like you know, 10 minutes running, you will not be able to touch the manifold, which is a bit weird. Ah. So next we're gonna install the uh, top mount back on. Make sure these cups are facing upwards onto the intake button like this when you thread the bolt through. And just give it a dab of this Loctite here um, to seal it in. And then do all those, and then we're gonna step and torque the bottom back down. So now with the spacers installed, you can see that it actually gives you an extra 5 16 which allows more air to breathe in the front intake runner. So as you can see, the hat is actually angled, and that's the whole purpose of this, as long as well as keeping um, some thermal uh, heat out of the intake. But we're also gonna cut this hose, but I'm gonna make another separate video for that, because I don't have the bypass valve, I thought I did. Uh, we'll get the bolt pattern going. Number 40, 80, and 100 inch pounds. Not foot pounds, or else you'll be fucking retapping your whole aluminum head. So once you have everything put back together, make sure to remove this stud here. We're not going to use those. They come with bolts and kit. Set the inch pounds, not foot pounds. Do 40 in the same pattern I'll post here. Then do 80, and then do 100, and then install your intake and cover and then your strut bar and then you should be good and then we'll go through the pedal uh, we learn process the throttle learn process and the ECU reset more than that a little more okay that's good <laughs>